hope you're all staying warm in this chilly day. Well, that was quite a switch, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, we have several announcements, and I'm going to let Jim go ahead first. Mine is very short, but I just uh, wanted to let you know that uh, after the service, as we adjourn into the fellowship hall for coffee, I'm expecting uh, our uh, new office assistant, um, Lynn Campbell, will be here. And I asked her just to stop by today just for a meet and greet and uh, introduce yourself to her and uh, talk to her briefly. Uh, she's recently joined us as the administrative assistant. I think she's doing a great job. She's learning fast. She's got lots of things organized. She has interest in music and in photography, and she's worked in some businesses. And uh, so I think she's really going to help us in a time when we need a little organizational help. So join after the meeting or after the service and uh, say hi to her, introduce yourself, and see what else she can tell you about herself. I also just wanted to say there's a couple of things. Uh, <clears throat> Jim Payne has got a notebook out there in the back. Clipboard it is. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Anyway, it's a list asking for people to sign up for times that they might be willing to usher. This whole past year, I've almost been calling people weekly to get ushers, and everybody's joined in, and we've had a great uh, service from the ushers. But I think it would be way more efficient and easier for people to plan if you kind of signed up for a month uh, for Sundays or whatever it is. And if we could get that filled up, we would have a really kind of an automatic better plan for, uh, for getting our ushering done during the year. And uh, so I ask you to look at that, think about it, and if you're willing to help us, uh, sign up on the clipboard out in the back. It's on the table right outside this room. And there's been one other uh, note that came uh, to our church from someone um, who uh, knows an elderly woman who lives in town who would like to come to church, uh, but she's handicapped enough she can't really get here by herself. So they were just asking, is there anybody that could provide rides uh, in and out for church? So I probably will put a little note like that in the bulletin uh, maybe next week and for a period of time. So thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, Jim. And following on that, Christmas decorating, this will be in next week's bulletin, will be this Saturday after Thanksgiving. So we'll just tuck that away. And the help fund I believe we collect next week and I would like, Friday was Veterans Day, and I would just like if all our veterans would please stand up so we can thank them for their service. <laughs> thank you. There was a nice addition in the Bonner, in the B, on veterans, and few of our folks made it. <laughs> All right, let us, uh, this is the second last day of our church calendar year. So let us stand and begin our morning worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. None of us are a perfect person, and as we reflect on our sin, let us confess in the presence of God and one another. God of consuming fire, treat us not as stubble through the folly of our misdeeds. 
We are misled by arrogance as we boost of our goodness. We look with disdain on those less fortunate and ignore the poverty of our own souls. Claiming to be among the mighty, we favor those gifted with similar strengths. As individuals and as a nation, we test your patience. Yet in Christ, you love us still. Forgive our pride and restore our sanity so that we may yet serve you. In the mercy of Almighty God that was Christ Jesus was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined in Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, and join with me. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water, your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs to your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Let us join in the gathering song, 532.
Is it on? Yeah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The service continues on page 120. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now we have a choir to bring us some special music.
is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall, si shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm is 98. I'll read the uh, lighter print, and if you'll follow with the bold. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lambs. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that is in all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is from 2 Thessalonians, beginning in the third verse. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such person, now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sat there. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things, you will see the days will come when there will not be one stone left upon the other and all will be thrown down. They ask him, teacher, when will this be? What will be the sign that this is about to take place? And Jesus said, beware, you are not led astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from the heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors 
because of my name. They will give you opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you the words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. And they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. Sounds like some of our news headlines today. Wars, famines, climate change, hurricanes, earthquakes, political upheaval. We see a lot of bad news in the media. Very similar to our scriptures today. Malachi, Thessalonians, and Luke give dire warnings of destruction and trouble to come. What is this world coming to? Shadowing every calamity, circling the grounds of every collapse, chasing every human tragedy, prophets and experts are sure to have announcements that all is lost. They are eager to foretell all futures, ready to broadcast that all hope is lost and dead. Tomorrow's canceled. All creation will be buried. Jesus says, beware. Luke tells us that Jesus says, beware, do not be terrified. In biblical times, as well as now, there are those who believe that the end is coming or is imminent. What are we to make of these scriptures and warnings? Jesus knew as well as we do that buildings and structures will not last. He also knew the disciples would face difficulties and troubles for confessing their faith. We are fortunate in that we live in a country where we can worship as we please and no one to tell us otherwise. The temple in biblical times was the center of Jewish worship. When Jesus spoke of its, its destruction, it was hard for the Jews to believe because it was such a monumental building Yet, several years after his death, it was destroyed by war. On September 11, 2001, we watched in horror as the World Trade Center towers and the Pentagons were attacked and the towers were destroyed. It was a time of uncertainty, a time of fear. I was in Kansas, and there were some who wondered if it was the end of life, the end of the world. No, it wasn't the end. But it did change the way many things were done. It was a wake-up call not to take things for granted or take life for granted. The message for today concentrates on Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Do not weary in doing what is right. As believers, we are to speak the truth of the gospel. Not always easy, but it's something we are to do. As Christians, we are sanctified. Now that's a big word. Sanctified, you've heard it all your life, is to be made holy through baptism and faith. Sanctification means that faith in God's action does not exclude but includes Christian life. Christian life is not only a great task, 
but it is a responsibility we all share. There is no such thing as Christian faith without Christian life. Sanctification is God's action. Sanctification is faith in God's action that gives us the ability to have courage and to act. We cannot make the world a better place to live in, but God can working in and through us. There can be no Christian faith without Christian action. It is faith in God's action that gives us the means to tell the truth. We are in a sanctuary, a holy place. Worship is important. It makes us aware of the holy, the mystery of God. Worship involves being in Christian community, family of God, and we are all part of that family. Worship provides the perspective because it reminds us that we are dependent on God to bring a new divine order into being. Do not worry about doing what is right. Our community and others needs to combat racism, bullying, sexism, and other isms that run contrary to God's truth. Life is not fair. And it is human tendency to want to get even or get revenge. God's way calls us to forgive and to live life as Christ taught us. It is hypocritical to say we are for peace and then build more weapons of war. To seek justice then use revenge instead of using revenge as punishment is not what Christ taught. Christian action for justice is to seek corrective issues, measures. When someone commits a bad crime, there are consequences. Festering hate destroys the hater, not the person who did the bad deed. To forgive does not mean approval. To forgive someone is to detach from getting caught up in that cycle of get even. It's not easy, but it is necessary to move on in life. There are times when speaking truth is difficult. Truth hurts. It can be understood or misunderstood, and, but it is important to speak truth kindly and in a matter-of-fact way to convey the message. Once a young girl was visiting my home. In the course of the conversation, she used the word nigger. I stopped her and said, we don't use that word in this house. Enough said. The conversation continued. Do not weary in doing what is right. Can you think of a time when you had to speak the truth? What was the reaction? How did you feel? As Christians, we are called on what Jesus calls us to do in faith. Malachi's words are indeed words of warning to evildoers, but they are also words of hope. Malachi predicted a messenger following in the footsteps of Elijah, and that messenger would come and redirect the people and would show them how to be righteous. We know the messenger. This messenger came as John the Baptist and Jesus. Jesus, the Christ, who saved us from our sins. We are moving towards the close of the church year. We remember that God creates new things 
new beginnings. As sinners, we have salvation and a God who judges the world with righteousness, not vindictiveness. Here at First Lutheran, you are in the midst of a transition. The end of one ministry and the beginning of, well, a yet-to-be ministry to come. Transition in ministry. Transition, change in ministry. Change does not mean death. Different forms of ministry may form as we continue throughout our worship calendar year. This is the truth, not only for us, but for many churches in our country, as the assistant to the bishop told us. I told council this week that I will stay with you as long as I am able Pastoring and Amber and I will continue preaching, and I am picking up some of the pastoral care hours. I am an experienced interim minister, and I may push you some in the weeks to come. Or as one comment was made, time to tidy up a few things. Don't wait until the next minister. I followed one of 35 years, I know. <laughs> you have talent, and you have the means to continue Christ's ministry. Let us go forward then and share the gospel message. As an important ministry, you have Luther Park and the Luther Park residents, and we're blessed to have them with us in worship. Our, the church also provides an office for the teen center. And these are just some of the ways in which the church ministers to, this church's ministry, ministry is to the community. There are others. Used to have kids alive, but everything changes. You have the food bank. We have different thing, uh, organizations that come in throughout the year and ask for some support. All these are ways in which this congregation continues its ministry of Christ to the community. Now, it's not all gloom. Psalm 98 gives us what we need for the best direction to take. Sing a new song to the Lord. Shout with joy, all nations. We have a song to sing, and we can make a joyful noise. And as your, our communists found out, I don't always read music very well, but I do it anyway. <laughs> the song and the joyful noise is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
let us confess our, our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Don't need flies. Let us pray. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing God, as the northern hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professional and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially those we list in our bulletin and those we name in our heart. Lord, in your mercy. Uniting God, unite this congregation in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Continue to be with us with the ministry to Luther Park and to the community at large. We also ask you to highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. And Lord, we also lift up prayers of thanks and praise for young ones who celebrate their 25th birthday. Guide them in the years to come and know they are loved and blessed by you. Lord, in your mercy. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share with one another the peace.
Let us give of our offerings to continue the ministry in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table that we may come to the help of all in need through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Indeed, it is right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through the great shepherd of your flock, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who after his resurrection sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations and promised to be with them even to the end of age. And so with the glorious company of the apostles and with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
holy God and holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise you, we praise and glorify, and we worship and adore. We worship and adore you. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. You may be seated. With this bread and with this cup, we remember your son, your firstborn of your new creation. We remember the life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await Jesus' coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share in this holy food. Nurture us in the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy and fill us with your blessing until needy no more. And bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is you, is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this covenant is sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you in remembrance of me. And every time we drink of the cup and eat of the bread, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal, you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world, to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive and have received this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face a shine upon you and give you peace. The, amen. <laughs> our closing hymn is 669. Go in peace. Share the good news.